Hi everyone, it's MJ, the fellow actuary, and in this video, I want to talk about the CM2 exam. Now, I know it's been rebranded as actuarial mathematics number two, but I still kind of see it as financial economics. This is what it was referred to back when it was core technical subject number eight. Now, the big changes is that they've added in a section on behavioral economics, and they've also sprinkled in a little bit of insurance stuff, I guess, to try and make it more actuarial. So, I don't know, I, I kind of preferred the old syllabus when it was just focused on financial economics and just on assets, just on market risk, whereas now they've added in this liability section and I kind of feel like that should have gone into CS2. Anyway, the big additions are ruin theory, which I absolutely love, I think that's amazing, and these other things called runoff triangles, which are perfectly designed for Excel. And speaking about Excel, the subject does come with an Excel exam. So not only do you have to do a three hour written paper like the other subjects, but you also have to do a one and a half hour Excel exercise. And the thing is this Excel thing trips up quite a lot of people because you can do it at home and everyone thinks, oh, it's relaxed, you've got your hot chocolate and you kind of start doing this Excel thing. And the questions aren't difficult. However, it's causing a lot of people to fail because they're running out of time and they've taken it too casually where you actually have to start this Excel exercise and one and a half hours is not a lot of time in order to do all the things that you need to do. However, to assist and to help you guys with the Excel component, I have created a Udemy course where I go through two past papers uh, step by step, just outlining all the things that you need to do, showing you all the Excel formulas, so I'm gonna put a link in the description below to that Udemy course. Um, of course, if you're doing my workshop in Johannesburg or Cape Town, you don't have to purchase it because this comes included with the, with the cost of the workshop. So I'll provide you with coupon codes there. But this is the thing is I'm, I'm busy preparing these workshops for CM2 and I thought, let me make just a general video where I speak about the subject. So right at the start, you have to do something called rational expectation theory and this is this whole idea of market efficiency can you beat the stock exchange or is it better to go active or is it better to go passive and i really really enjoy it then it does get a little bit more how would you say it gets very theoretical especially in the section called expected utility theory and this was something that was started by the bernoulli brothers um oh, sorry, not bernoulli brothers they were cousins they they played this game in order to develop, you know, why do people make irrational decisions? And this has kind of been extended by also another guy called John von Neumann, who worked on the Manhattan Project, uh, developing nuclear bombs. He added a whole bunch to, to the whole structure. And then even recently now, there's been a whole bunch more research being done. And this is where the behavioral economics comes in. It can be a little bit difficult because it is a very theoretical concept and it's not something that we necessarily see in reality. Then, like I said, there is a little bit of the ruin theory, the runoff triangles, uh, but the bulk of the course is dealing still with um, asset, assets and market risk and those type of things. So capital asset pricing model, mean variance portfolio theory, those are two big chunks. Um, I think the scariest thing in, in the syllabus is still stochastic calculus. I mean, Ito's lemma still kind of gives me a little bit of nightmares. And that is where you're trying to integrate those jagged, you know, teeth line, you know, the stock exchanges to try and see what is the area underneath those curves in order to calculate various risks and do uh, stochastic projections and stuff like that. That is difficult. I'm not going to lie. That is that is quite difficult. And then the final section is on option pricing and uh, derivatives. And for some people, it just clicks. They find there's the beauty in the mathematics and it's, it's quite happy. Um, other students do kind of struggle with these instruments that are deriving their value from another asset and like what's going on and then there's put options and then there's different types of spreads and strategies that you can do and volatility smiles and it does it does escalate quite quite quickly um, but it is still something that I think is is manageable. Stochastic calculus is probably the hardest part of the course but the one thing that I tell my students and I also want to tell you guys is especially with a subject like financial economics it's so important to understand the place of the subject in the real world, especially when it's so conceptual and there are these big differences. 
So the one thing I recommend is to is to read books, and that's I've actually got I've got a bunch of books over here that I just want to show you guys that I've been reading that helped me a lot with this exam. This is one of the hardest actuarial exams, so it might be worth reading a bunch of textbooks and other uh, nonfiction written by people who've won Nobel Prizes in economics to just try get a another perspective. So the first book I've got here, it's called it's called Animal Spirits, okay? And it's how human psychology drives the economy and why it matters for global capitalism. And it's weird. The reason why I bought this book is because this guy, Robert J. Schiller, um, from Yale University, I mean, you can get all of their lectures from Yale University on iTunes University for free. So you can go, and that's what I did. I got, I think it was like 10 hours worth of these lectures talking about stock markets. I would listen to it while I was in uh, in the traffic uh, going to Vits back in my first year. And so I, I thought, you know what, I need to get this guy's book and just read about how stories kind of drive the stock market price. And it was quite cool. 2013, he won the Nobel Prize in Economics for his work. So definitely a good book worth reading. Um, what was interesting is Schiller was very good friends with another guy called uh, Jeremy Siegel, and he kind of spoke a lot about him in his lectures. So I was like, well, okay, let me let me get his book as well. And his book is called The Future for Investors and Why the Triad and the True Triumph Over the Bold and the New. And it's kind of why um, he's also author of a book called Stocks for the Long Run. And he kind of talks about why stocks are better than bonds. And this is interesting because there's literally a part in the syllabus, I think it's section 1.33, that says explain the equity uh, premium puzzle, which is why have stocks done so much better than bonds and you can yeah, you can read you can read an entire book for what syllabus objective to get a nice nice overview um then i've got i mean this book is more for enterprise risk management so not the entire textbook is is appropriate but there is some stuff here on market risk and it talks a lot about some of the credit models and stochastic interest rates and all of these things so if you want a more technical, detailed look and you're not happy with the notes that you've been provided at university, uh, this book is worth worth getting. Also, it's going to help you a lot when it comes to enterprise risk management if you're ever going to do that specialist subject. Also on enterprise risk management, I mean, this book, it's it's a very, very easy read and it's something I think all, all actors should read this book because it just kind of outlines uh, risk management. I mean, in a way, actuarial science and risk management we are very closely linked, so it's worth reading and seeing how businesses apply some of the incentives and controls uh, to try and manage this thing that us actuaries have dedicated our lives towards. Um, then this was kind of the book that got me got me really interested in finance. I read this when I was when I was still back at school. It's called the New Buffetology. So it's basically now it's now it's the old Buffetology. But it was yeah, the proven techniques for investing successfully in changing markets that have made Warren Buffett the most famous investor. And then I remember like the first page was a disclaimer, like you could lose all your money. And I was like, ooh. Um, but yeah, quite a nice book to get started with financial markets. You start learning a little bit about the basics. Um, it's weird. I kind of disagree with everything in this book now. After, after doing my fellowship in finance, I think passive investing is the way to go and that active investing might have worked for Buffett in like the 70s and the 80s but um, but yeah that time's over but still worth a book worthy to to read and then I mean this is the subject well, like I said it used to be called financial economics so it might be worth brushing up especially if you haven't done economics in a long time it's just getting like a general book on economics and just you know you know, just refreshing the mind on what is micro, what is macro, um, and some of these things like what does quantitative easing do to the market and various other currency manipulations and, and those kind of things. So this is, this is again, it's probably a good book for all, all actors to read. And then there are a few others that I can't find. I don't know where I've put them in my room. Uh, they're probably under a pillow or something like that. Uh, the one is called Predictable Irrationality. And that is also great for behavioral economics. It kind of shows that all the assumptions that people are rational investors 
kind of doesn't really work out in reality and it's an interesting studies that they did in some of the experiments so a really fun read there and then of course with the subject probably the best textbook that you can get it's i think is it john c hull i just know his name's hull but remember it sounded very similar to hell and i was like you know this subject is a little bit of hell without this textbook so john c hull's textbook on i think it's called option pricing and derivative trading or or something like that but it's a really really good book to read and especially to use to study when it comes to specifically the cm2 exam which is the new ct8 so if you're doing financial economics i highly 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 recommend that textbook um, what i'm going to do is i'm going to put a link um in the description below so that you can get all of these books. I think they're all available on Amazon. I'll find the links. I'll post those below. And then, like I said, they also put a link to the Udemy course. So for people who are studying that subject and you want extra help with the Excel component, I've made a whole bunch of dedicated videos just to that. I'm gonna put on the YouTube because then it kind of like, you know, everyone will be like, oh, another Excel video. I might, I might put one or two new ones because I need to keep updating that course. Uh, of course, new exams are being written, so I might make one on like stochastic dominance and how to do that in exile and upload this onto the channel. So if you haven't, make sure you subscribe, hit that like button and let me know your thoughts in the comment section. But yeah, go check out these books in the description and study hard. Thanks for watching. Cheers.